We are back again with another dive into the Mariana Trench to take a look at all it has to offer. On today's list, we are going to be looking at a few geological features of the trench, some creatures that look like aliens, a creature without a brain, and another weirdly large crustacean. We're going to be talking about all of this and more as we cover part four of the top 10 weirdest things found in the Mariana Trench. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have spoonworms. Spoonworms are a strange looking little creature that can be found in many areas of the ocean, and of course, even in the Mariana Trench. These guys are basically just plump, unsegmented worms that find their homes in the burrows on the seabed. Different members of this animal family can live at different temperatures, but most of the deep sea variety live deeper than 3,000 meters where the water is icy cold. The deep sea spoonworms often see the females growing much larger than the males, and in most instances, the males end up living inside or at least on the females. I'm not entirely sure of the logistics of that, but it does sound awful. In these species, their stomachs are much longer than their bodies, so their gut ends up folded and coiled inside of them, which I guess isn't unsimilar to human intestines. In our number nine spot today, we have volcanic glass. Did you know that there are volcanoes underwater, even in the deep sea? Right near the Mariana Trench in 2015, scientists found evidence of what was the deepest ever known volcanic eruption. They didn't catch the actual eruption, but they knew it had happened because of the volcanic glass they found three miles or 4,800 meters below the sea. This discovery was huge because it is not often that we find deep sea volcanic eruptions, but it was the first time scientists had found one that had erupted very recently. The volcanic glass is created because of the hot magma coming into contact with the icy cold waters, which cools it down quickly. This discovery helped scientists understand what happens when an eruption occurs underwater, such as how some quick moving creatures find their home in the aftermath almost immediately. It is said that around 80% of the world's volcanic eruptions occur under the water, and it's still something we know so little about, so this discovery gave us an incredibly important look at what happens afterwards. In our number eight spot today, we have the sea cucumber. Sea cucumbers are creatures that can be found all over the oceans on our earth, even in the most extreme environments such as the Mariana Trench. These guys have many different appearances, but they all look somewhat like a giant worm or some kind of spiky, slimy cucumber. They're often called the vacuum cleaners of the ocean as they mainly feed on tiny particles of algae or microscopic marine animals, and they play a vital role in recycling marine nutrients. They have a bunch of little tentacles that they use to eat, and they can often be found on or close to the sea floor. There are a few species of sea cucumbers that can swim, but not all of them do. In some species, their tentacles are even able to secrete a mucus net that can be used to trap small planktonic organisms. One really crazy thing about some kinds of sea cucumbers is that they can expel their internal organs when threatened. This would seem like a huge problem, but sea cucumbers can regenerate their organs quite quickly after. They also don't have a brain, which I felt like was important to include. I guess maybe if we take our brains out, then can we regenerate our own? Organs? Uh, I'm just joking, obviously. In our number seven spot today, we have rat tails. These fish are usually fairly large, and while most species belonging to this family are deep sea fish, there's one specific species that are found in the Mariana Trench. These fish have larger heads and eyes, but then their body tapers out into a thin tail fin, which is how they got their common name. Rat tails are one of the most common deep water fish, and they like to snack on things like smaller fish, some kinds of crustaceans, and even sometimes lanternfish. These fish are great scavengers, which is an important part of the deep sea ecosystem. When these fish are young, they tend to stay in more shallow water, but as they grow older, they migrate further into the icy cold depths of the sea. In our number six spot today, we have barophilic bacteria. This bacteria is characterized by its preference for an environment with pressure greater than our atmospheric pressure, which of course makes the trench a perfect candidate for a home. These bacteria have been isolated from deep sea environments and found to grow
grow rapidly at low temperatures and high pressures. This low temperature high pressure combo that is found in the deep sea environment is usually the cause for the decrease of the fluidity of lipids as well as the depression of the function of biological membranes. But this doesn't happen in this bacteria which has led to the theory that they must have some sort of mechanism that allows their lipids to adapt to their extreme environment. Aside from their superpower, these bacteria help to support life by being a source of carbon for the deep sea animals that end up ingesting them. In our number 5 spot today we have immense pressure. In every part of this video series I have talked about the extreme environment that is the Mariana Trench and just how much pressure exists down there, but I haven't taken the time to really dive into just how much pressure is down there. So we're going to do that now. The deeper you go into the ocean, the more pressure you'd feel. Close to the surface of the ocean, we're sitting at a base of one atmospheric pressure, but when you go just 10 meters deep, that number already doubles. Considering the Mariana Trench is 11,000 meters deep, this is obviously going to increase greatly. The pressure causes the air in your body to compress, and the deeper you go, the more dense the water becomes. While the concept of the increasing pressure is easy to understand, Understand, it truly is really hard to conceptualize how this change happens and just how deep this trench really is. One atmospheric pressure is 1.01325 bars, which is the unit used to measure pressure. So like I mentioned before, this is where we are sitting when close to the surface of the ocean, but in the depths of the Mariana Trench, that number skyrockets to 1086 bars, which apparently would be the equivalent of 100 elephants standing on you. So it's suddenly making a lot more sense as to why people don't journey down to the Challenger Deep very often. In our number 4 spot today we have arrowtooth eels. The arrowtooth eels that reside in the Mariana Trench are a species that not much is known about. These eels range somewhere from 23 to 160 centimeters or 9.1 to 63 inches in length. They are bottom dwelling fish and can be found in waters around 3,700 meters or 12,000 and 100 feet deep. They can be told apart from other eels in their early stages because of their telescopic eyes during the larva stage. These guys like to feed on the scraps left over from other larger fish meals as well as invertebrates, but they have also been known to be partly parasitic as they sometimes burrow into the flesh of other fish. Here's a little clip of one swimming past a camera that is located around 11,000 meters deep in the sea. In our number 3 spot today we have the hydrothermal vents. The Mariana Trench is part of the Pacific Ring of Fire which is a tectonically active region where plates are colliding and causing subduction which is how the trench itself was formed. Through this tectonic activity as seawater seeps downwards through the oceanic crust it gets really hot and becomes very rich in chemicals. This leads to the water becoming so buoyant that it comes back out of the surface of the sea floor and this is what is called a hydrothermal vent. The water coming out of the vent is that same super hot, super chemically rich water and it is an extremely important part of underwater ecosystems. The water from the vent is highly acidic and hot, while the water in the depths of the ocean is slightly basic and freezing cold. There are many different smaller species who come to the vent areas because of the chemicals in the water as well as the heat which helps certain types of food sources grow which they then want to consume. This then leads to it being a feeding hot spot as larger predators can also come to the vent to feed on the other smaller organisms that are already in the feeding area. There are usually a high amount of animals found in the area of a hydrothermal vent, but not a wide variety of different animals as the temperature extreme is not suited for everyone in the deep sea. In our number 2 spot today we have vent crabs. Okay, so to piggyback off of the last point, we have a creature that loves the hydrothermal vents and that is the aptly named vent crab. These white crabs are actually endemic to hydrothermal vents and they were first described in 1980. The crabs in this family are usually blind and abundant. In fact, their numbers are so vast that scientists often use the clusters of them to help find the location of the hydrothermal vents. The 
eyes of vent crabs change throughout their life, which helps them adapt to their environment. Young vent crabs usually have eyes that would be comparable to their shallow water companions, but upon metamorphosis, their eyes degenerate and become naked retinas. Hydrothermal vents produce light in the infrared wavelengths, and this change in the vent crab's eyes actually allows them to better see this light, although it causes them to not be able to see most other things. It's like a similar concept to night vision goggles. So basically, vent crabs have night vision, I guess? It is so interesting to see and learn about how these deep sea creatures adapt to their individual environments and circumstances. Vent crabs often eat tiny organisms and bacteria, which is another reason they thrive near the vents. In our number one spot today, we have giant isopods. Before I dive into this number one point, make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far. It really helps us out. Despite their appearance, these guys are neither aliens or pill bugs and are just another one of those strange and weirdly large deep sea creatures. These rather large crustaceans can reach lengths of around 15 inches, and while that's not the biggest deep sea creature out there, that's still pretty insane for the isopod world. These guys get their size from what is known as deep sea gigantism, which is an evolutionary tendency for deep sea creatures to grow larger than their shallow water counterparts. It isn't exactly clear why this happens, but it does, and is seen in a few different species, such as those giant shrimps we were talking about last time. It is thought that it may be due to the cold temperatures, which may increase cell size and lifespan, which both may lead to increased body size. Giant isopods are related to wood lice, albeit distant cousins, which is why they look kind of similar. These guys are scavengers who usually wait to collect the scraps of whatever is left over from another predator's meal, whether those leftovers are located on the sea floor or if they're falling from the waters above like sea snow. All right guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlovsky, and I'll see you next time. Bye.